in this topic and the subsequent ones we will be discussing the approaches to staffing human resource and other operations in international organizations uh, so we will be uh, discussing what are the different ways of uh, staffing uh, operations in international management uh, staffing means uh, appointing recruiting selecting the appropriate people for the various different job positions in an organization so hum kis tarah se logon ko hire karte hain aur particularly international operations mein jahan pe aapki firms jo hain wo ek se zyada mulkon mein operate kar rahi hain wahan pe aap logon ko kis tarah hire karte hain kis tarah se select karte hain that is something which is we are going to uh, discuss in in this topic and the subsequent a few topics so in this topic we will be discussing the approach to staffing uh, which is ethnocentric approach ethnocentric approach as ethnocentrism means that uh, favoring your own ethnicity that is basically the literal meaning of ethnocentrism so favoring your own ethnic group ethnic uh, ethnic uh, class um, that is the basic spirit of an ethnocentric approach it means that when an organization is operating in various different countries the organizational management and its top management it has a strategic plan an objective to favor the appointment of people from its own country from its own ethnicity means from basically from its own country so parent country nationals as you know that there are parent country national host country nationals and third country nationals in international human resource management so parent country nationals are given more importance and they are um they are given uh, appointments and roles and responsibilities even in the international divisions so if a firm it belongs to uh, usa and they have got subsidiary in pakistan or india they will be sending their own people american people to manage the firms which are operating in pakistan or india all right so in ethnocentric firms there are few foreign uh, uh, subsidiaries they have the autonomy and strategic decisions are made uh, at the headquarters so they keep things within themselves and they believe that the own country management can look after the decisions of the organization for the entire subsidiaries working in in the, uh, in the global markets Uh, so there is not much autonomy that is given to the foreign subsidiaries uh regarding human resource management the key positions in domestic and foreign operations are held by managers from the headquarters so even if it is the domestic subsidiary or the foreign subsidiary the position will be held by uh, parent country nationals and managers who are sent from the headquarters so for, if a american company has its headquarters in america american people will be sent to manage the subsidiaries which are in the rest of the world and then subsidiaries are managed by staff from the home country so parent country nationals are going to come and manage subsidiaries in the rest of the world that is an ethnocentric approach to staffing why would we do that let's take a look at the reasons number one reason for having an ethnocentric approach is a perceived understanding that there are not enough skilled people in the home uh, in in the host country so if uh, for example you are opening up operations in pakistan and you are coming from germany or france or australia you think that in pakistan there is not enough there is a perceived understanding it may not be true ज़रूरी नहीं है कि ऐसा ही हो लेकिन जो लोग बाहर से आ रहे हैं उनकी ये परसीव्ड अंडरस्टैंडिंग हो सकती है कि देर आर नॉट अनाफ क्वालिफाइड होस्ट कंट्री नेशनल सो दैट इज़ वन ऑफ द टॉप मोस्ट रीजन वाई दे वुड बी अपॉइंटिंग पीपल फ्राम द पेरेंट कंट्री देन देर इफ द रीज़न वन ऑफ अनदर रीजन इज द नीड टू मेनटेन गुड कम्युनिकेशन 
uh, coordination and control links with the corporate headquarters. So if there is a requirement which, uh, which, needs, to be, uh, uh, which needs to have a good communication, a good coordination with the parent country, the strategic decision making is coming from the parent country and the host country operations, they are not skilled and expert enough to manage things on their own, then that means that there has to be good coordination between the headquarters and the uh, subsidiary. So if that is the case, then, that, then, then uh, parent country nationals would be sent to manage so that there is good coordination and communication between the host country subsidiary and the headquarters. And this is particularly very much important at the early stages of internationalization because that can reduce the high risks inherent in new environment. Uh, so when you are entering, you are in the early stage of internationalization, it means you are entering a market which is unknown to you, which means that there are high risks with, attached with the new environment. You may not know what kind of market it is. You may not know what kind of people they are. You may not know what kind of culture there is. So there is possibility that you would not be understanding the new environment. So it is better to be safe and keep it uh, to your own parent country national managers to be managing your operations so that there is good coordination and control and uh, the strategic objectives of the organization can be met in the initial phases of the internationalization. Then later on, this approach can change as the organization becomes more and more entrenched in the new culture, in the host country environment. So this situation can change later on. It's not something that if you, uh, you, if you employ an ethnocentric approach at one time, you cannot change and shift to another approach at the later time. But this definitely has got some disadvantages. And what are those disadvantages? Uh, first of all, it limits the promotion opportunity of host country nationals and uh, because the parent country nationals, people from the headquarters, they are basically coming and um, they are occupying the top positions, particularly the top positions in the uh, subsidiary organization. So uh, the head of operations would be a foreigner, the head of, um, uh, the head of admin would be a foreigner, the head of uh, finance would be a manager. So if there is a situation like this, when the host country nationals uh, uh, when they look at their career objectives, they would feel that they have got a career block over there and they will not be able to progress. And what will it cause? It will cause a lack of productivity and low motivation in those people who are actually belonging to that environment, who are actually receiving the, uh, the rewards, who are receiving the goods and services of that environment. The people who are coming from that environment are not uh, uh, will not be satisfied. Uh, so that may lead to some kind of um, uh, increased turnover among that group because they will not be committed to the organization as they don't see career development over there. Uh, then another uh, disadvantage of an ethnocentric approach is the adaptation of expatriates could take a long time. When a foreigner is coming to a new culture, when they do adaptation, they will not be able to understand their culture, when they do understanding of their culture, when they do not understand their culture, they will be making poor decisions because they do not understand the environment. So that may lead to additional cost for the organization. Uh, another advantage is that the parent country nationals and host country nationals, they their compensation packages are starkly different. So if, for example, if somebody is coming from USA, he will be paid in dollars, whereas if uh, it is the subsidiary is operating in Pakistan, they will be paid in rupees, and there is going to be a huge difference because the uh, average income in USA and average income in Pakistan is starkly different. But when they will be working in the same place, so for example, 
example, if a manager is is earning, let's say, um, ten thousand uh, dollars per month, whereas a uh, a, a person who is just uh, next to him, his subordinate, he is only getting four to five lakh rupees. That is going to be a huge difference between the uh, the, the pay that is uh, perceived by organizational members. So compensation packages are going to be hugely different, which would which would definitely be uh, it would cause a sense of unfairness in the organizational members. Uh, then another disadvantage of uh, ethnocentric approach is that people coming from the foreign uh, operations from the headquarters, they would have this kind of a uh, sense of authority, a sense of pride, and that would mean a new status for them. And this could lead to a, a kind of uh, uh, insensitivity towards the host country nationals because when they have this kind of pride ki ji hum to american hain ya hum british hain aur ye jo hain ye dusre developing countries se belong karte hain ye chinese hain ya ye korean hain ya pakistani hain uh, they would have this kind of pride over them that we are somebody who are uh, managing these people so this could lead to an insensitivity towards the host country nationals which also is going to lead to different disastrous situations among the organization if it is not managed well. So this are, these are some of the uh, various different aspects of an ethnocentric approach to staffing and the reasons behind it and what are the different disadvantages related to that.